Welcome. Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how great gates are in Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tyler, and joining me today on another episode of the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast is the one and only Mr. Snail Trail himself. How you doing, Mr. Snail Trail? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm healthier, so that's a bonus. You're healthier? Well, I was uh, sick a little last week I or so. I guess that's right, yeah. So I'm uh, feeling much better, but I still have this, like, uh, the assistant calls it a kennel cough, uh, which I don't quite get because I'm not <laughs> locked up anywhere, but I still have this lingering cough. Gotcha. I kind of liked recording out back last time. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Anyways, so this is a Monday episode, a fun day Monday for everybody out there. Hopefully you guys had a great weekend. I had a decent weekend. We'll get into that later. But uh, let's see. We have some uh, housekeeping things to get to. Yes, we do. Um, we're coming up on kind of nearish the end of the month. We're in the second half of the month here. So we're, you guys are damn near the end of the month. We are already? Yeah. I mean, what? Jesus it's Christ. the 22nd today. We're recording oh, a few days before Monday, which is probably the 25th. This weekend is the 30th and the 1st. Wow. Yeah. Time flies God, when you're yeah. traveling. When you're doing a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're almost done with the month then. Here, <laughs> here we, we are. <laughs> So you guys only have a few more days to get in for the gear wrench giveaway this month. Uh, we've got a bolt biter kit, another bolt biter kit and a ratcheting T handle kit that so, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the, the regular bolt body bolt biter sockets, which are freaking awesome. Really cool set. And then we have the bolt biter screw extractors and the 33 piece ratcheting T handle set, which is a pretty cool uh, piece of equipment there. So all these are really cool pieces. Of equipment. True. Yeah. They're all in a kit form with like a uh, plastic boxes. So they'd be mm-hmm. great for a trail, uh, taking out on the trails and throwing in your, uh, tool bags. Cause mm-hmm. they're all sort of separate setups, So mm-hmm. it makes it easy to work with. And they're, they're all necessary. I don't know how many times, you know, you come across a worn out, screwed up bolt out on the trail that uh-huh. nobody can get off and you're welding nuts to it. Oh, I can get it off. Yeah, I'm sure you get it off <laughs> or a broken screw that you have to get out. Uh-huh. Something like a, you know, stud for a uh, steering arm on a Toyota. Yes. That's a common break that you mm-hmm. need screw extractors for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the ratcheting T handle is just very versatile. Yeah. I wonder if you could use the screw extractor with the ratcheting T handle. Maybe. Uh, uh, you might be able to actually. It looks like similar... Heck set up. No, nah, those look smaller. Anyways, so pretty cool piece. Uh, three little fun kits there from Gear Wrench. Uh, thank you, Gear Wrench, for all the support on the Snail Trail 4x4 channel. Uh, we love working with you guys. So we'll keep that rolling so we can keep doing some fun stuff for all the listeners out there. Uh, we also have reviews going on all the time. Yes, we do. I don't know yep. where we're at. I haven't checked in a while. So, but we did just do a 550 swag pack giveaway. So we're on our way to 600 reviews now, which we're when at which point we'll do another swag pack giveaway. And once we reach 750 reviews, we're giving away a set of tires from Yokohama. I know that's so mm-hmm. awesome. You can get pretty much any set of tire you want, as mm-hmm. long as it's not a 20 inch tire or a, like a slick. Yeah, pretty much a, a non DOT non DOT yeah. tire. Yeah. Um, and apparently I don't think you can get forties right now either. Oh yeah. Because the MFers bought, bought them, them all. all. <laughs> yeah. Well. Somebody else just tried to go get a set of forties recently from the same vendor. We got ours through stellar built who gets his through a, a wholesaler. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, went back to him and like a week later after all the MFers bought theirs, and they were said that they were all out and they're out in the country. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yokohama's out of stock. So yeah, the MFers I bought, I think the last one's from Yokohama. Wow. That's, I might Sorry, need everybody. some, so get ready, Yokohama. <laughs> I might do an, a, a purchase here at some point. Yeah. Let's see. So set of tires at 750 reviews. Yep, if yep. you guys want to get entered for that and all the swag pack giveaways between now and 750, uh, all you got to do is head over to, uh, what is it? Apple Podcasts. And uh, make sure you have an Apple Podcast account or an iTunes account. Log in, go to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast and leave a review. 
So that's where most of the internet's podcast algorithms come from is uh, a lot of uh, from an Apple podcast. So if you leave a review on Spotify, sorry, won't work. Doesn't count. Does not count. But I mean, it does work for <laughs> boosting us in the overall scheme of podcast life. Yeah. If you leave a, a review over on Spotify, we'll have Willing Wine and Whiskey send you a sticker. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be a five star review though. No four and a half stars. Yeah, that's Sorry, how guys. they they brag or uh, not brag. Bribe. They bribe. Thank yeah. you. That's the word. Yeah, that's how they bribe their people. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, speaking of them, did you hear that I won an award? I did. Yeah, I'm I, still waiting to receive my award. But yeah, yeah, the Jack Stand Award. I think that's what it is. What is yeah, that what it was called. Yeah. I hopefully you get a jack stand at least. That'd be awesome, right? I would love to get a jack stand. Another one? Uh huh. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You won an award. Hustle Nuts won an award. Mm-hmm. It, Chris didn't win. Who else? There was, was another it? Ultra Four Jones. Ultra Four Jones mm-hmm. won. That's what it was. race car driver, formerly known or yeah. Ultra Four Jones, formerly known as race car driver. <laughs> right. <laughs> and these awards were given by what was for is formerly known as Samurai James. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because literally when that episode aired, I was on my way out to the Rubicon <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Or I just I, gotten back from the Rubicon, I think. Something yeah. Like that. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. It was a Tuesday. So you yeah. probably just got back from mm-hmm. Rubicon. Yep. I did call in though and give an acceptance speech. Oh, I don't know if they've played it yet. Though. I, I haven't, haven't heard, heard it. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. They never play my voicemails. I call in like almost twice a week. Oh, and really? they've never played one of my voicemails. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I've called in once or twice and I think they played them both. So oh, fuck you. Playing favoritism <laughs> here. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, it's okay. I'll be living that Lance life soon, apparently. Yeah, uh, that's what I was. I heard that rumor through mm-hmm. a text thread. So mm-hmm. we'll get into that here in a little while. That one probably won't come. Details of that probably won't come out until Thursday's episode, I think. Okay. So uh, go leave us a review. We love reviews and uh, that's a really good way to help out the podcast and get us into other people's ear holes. And the more ear holes we're in, the more cool stuff we get to do, like a giveaway set of tires, give away some gear wrench product and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Get to talk with guys from Moose Knuckles and uh, other places. Yeah. Speaking of Moose Knuckle, there's a few days left to get into that group buy that's closing at the end of this month. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, if you do want some Moose Muckle swag or gear, um, check out their website. Yep. Write us a detailed email of what products you do want, including mm-hmm. the colors. Mm-hmm. And then we'll uh, we'll get together with Kyle and do that order. Yep. But uh, every, we should be receiving 30% off the orders. Pretty much site-wide, yeah, on moosenuckle.com. So yep. go check that out. Um, I have not replied to anybody Okay. That has sent in their order yet for the Moose Knuckle buy. So don't be alarmed if you haven't gotten anything from me. Uh, we'll be putting everything together at the end of the month. Look for something. God, I'll be out of trail here first week of October. So uh, look for something second or third week of October Sounds from good. me about the Moose Knuckle buy. And good. I haven't gone through and uh, figured out who hasn't paid for their winches yet. Mm. I'm pretty sure everybody has paid, um, but I need to go through and double check and make sure everything's shipping because we have... I think there's like two winches left that I need to figure out where they're supposed to be going. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So don't be alarmed if you haven't heard from me yet on winches either. Uh, I'm working on it. It's been a very interesting month. Yes. You've so been all over the place. That's for sure. I've been everywhere, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we got? What other background housekeeping things? I don't think there's much else. Can't recall. I'm excited for these gift boxes. Yes, me too. <laughs> I've got to do a little bit of work on the gift boxes. I'm really hoping to put them together on Wednesday. Nice. That's my uh, tentative goal. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can ship them out before October hits. We'll see. I think so. I think we have everything um, pretty much. Just a, a couple more things need to get pooped. We got everything except for my project. Your project. Well, I haven't finished my project yet. Okay. Good. I'm, I don't feel so bad then. Yeah. I'm one quarter, 25% left. Okay. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent. No, that's not exactly true. 98%. I've done four of the like 60. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Constantine can let us know what that is. Yep. Uh, he wrote in recently. Did he? Yeah. He said, Hey guys, I'm still here. I haven't been ignoring you, uh, but he hasn't written out in a while, but he did. Uh, he gave us the answer to that math question. I forget what it was though. I need to look it up. 
It's one fifteenth. One fifteenth is my answer. Oh, <laughs> nice! I did the math myself, Constantine. <laughs> Good job. Four of sixty is one fifteenth. Yeah, perfect. Look at you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gift boxes are coming out. That means that the gift box tier is going to be open soon. October Saturday, 1st. Sunday, mm-hmm. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> the gift box tour is open. <laughs> uh, so that happens uh, October 1st through October 31st where the gift box tier is open. So if you guys want to move around, uh, do whatever you want to move around your subscription with snail trail four by four, you can do that. You can get up into the gift box tier. You can move out of the gift box tier. You can uh, do annual subscription or go back to monthly subscription, whatever you want to do there. All the options are going to be open from October 1st to October 31st at irate4x4.com <laughs> under the snail trail 4x4 forum. So Correct. Yeah. Yep. Just a friendly reminder though, that if you are going to change forum or change tiers, you need to cancel the current tier you're on, on your PayPal account. Correct. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to change tiers, if you're going to stay where you're at, don't worry about it. If you are going to change tiers, you need to cancel your the tier that you're on and then sign up for the next tier. Because if you sign up for another tier, it doesn't automatically cancel it or change for you. Mm-hmm. You'll just be double signed up. Yep. Which is okay too. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yep. We let's accept us do, it. Let's us do more fun things. So yeah. <laughs> we'll enter you twice for the gift uh, for the giveaway. Yeah. Right. So let's see. What else is there? Anything else? Any other fun things? No, I got a fun little story, though, if you mm. want to do that before we jump into how your trip went. Sure. I like stories. Okay. So not too long ago, a little while ago, you can remember probably that uh, we had a listener write in who's a contractor, and he said that he's up in my area, and if I ever need some help to reach out and uh, hit him up. Is it Cody Addington? No. Oh. Okay. Uh, Reese Love. Oh, okay. Yeah. And... Uh, so I actually, I called Derek Miller first and I called him and I said, Hey, talk to me about installing doors. And okay. Derek's like, did you get pre-hung doors or did you just buy new doors? And okay. I said, I just bought new doors. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh man, I wish you would have talked to me first. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging doors sucks. It's okay. a lot of work. And I said, well, the holes for the handles are already cut. He's like, yeah. But, and I was like, but the holes for the hinges aren't cut. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, you got to get a jig and a router and you cut them all out. And depending on if the hole lines up where like the handle is supposed to go, you know, and the uh, mechanism yeah. into the, the wall or the frame doesn't line up perfectly. Then you have to cut stuff off the top of the door or the bottom <laughs> of the door. It's like, did you get hollow core or solid core doors? And I was like, well, we had got so- hollow core. And he's like, yeah. So depending on where the handle falls, yeah, you, you might may not be able to, might not be able to even install these. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, dang it. Like, this is more work right now than I want to deal with mm-hmm. for you know, on the house. Like I'm, I need somebody to take care of this. Are you interested in doing? It? He's like, I would help you out, man, but I'm absolutely swamped right now. Good. And I said, okay, that, good for you. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. Uh, thanks for letting me know, and um, I'll find somebody else. So I hit up the contractor guy that hit us up or mm-hmm. hit me up and said, hey, he's in the area. If I never needed help, so I reached out to him, Reese. And I said, Hey, are you interested in helping me out with this? And he said, yeah, uh, let me come over and take a bunch of measurements, figure it out, look at what you have and all this, you know, get a scope of the land, you mm-hmm. know, before he fully agrees. And I was like, cool. So Reese comes over and he pulls up in a fantastic, like first gen Toyota pickup, <laughs> it's like black. <laughs> the exterior is super clean. He put mm-hmm. the, like the cool stickers on it. Mm-hmm. It's stock ish, like okay. maybe a little bit bigger, like lift, maybe like one or one inch lift and maybe slightly larger tires uh-huh. than what is stock, you know, and just super clean in and out. Uh-huh. And so uh, we started talking about the truck for a while. And then he's like, you're going to be pissed at me. I'm like, what? He's like, you're going to be pissed. Oh, no. I know what it is. What? It's uh, your birth month. It is a November <laughs> of 1980 Toyota pickup. <laughs> I'm like, you're such an asshole. <laughs> Why would you bring this oh, over funny. in front of me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know I've been looking for these trucks. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I wanted to show you that they're out there. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. Good job, Reese. I give you a big round of applause, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I should have just been like, all right, how much? How much? How Everything's much? for sale. Yeah. Everything's- <laughs> Tell me a price. 
<laughs> I just sold the house. How much? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I've babe. A, I've got a few hey, hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just sold our how much our house made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a truck. Bought a truck for two hundred thousand yeah. dollars, babe. Hope yeah. you're happy. <laughs> Merry Christmas. We can live in it, sorta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, uh, yeah. So that, that was, uh, that was funny. So, um, yeah, jerk. I'm still, it's such a nice truck too. Uh -huh. It's super clean. Uh, he's been into Toyotas forever and a day mm -hmm. has a bunch of Toyotas, but is now wheeling a CJ five, but as, uh, bought or got a, another Toyota to start fixing that up into mm -hmm. a crawler too. And it's like so, a gen four runner. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. So he, uh, he quoted me the job mm -hmm. and then he was like, you still got that dual ARB compressor laying around? <laughs> I'm like I do. And he's like, what do you, you just want to do a trade? I'm like, sure. Perfect. That works out well. <laughs> so yeah. So he, uh, came over the other day and did a solid six hours of work mm -hmm. installing eight doors. Wow. They're clean though. Like he yeah. spent, he, made them really, really nice. Like nice. they shut well, uh -huh. you know, nothing hits. He trimmed them down. He belt. I guess there's a beveled edge on a door. Oh, like I had no idea about Interesting. this okay. the door that has the, the handle on it. Mm -hmm. The side that has the handle is beveled to, so it slides oh, shut that makes easier. Sense. Okay. Right? Yeah. If it was squared, it would, it could hit the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I had no idea idea about that, but all doors supposedly have this bevel on it. Huh. So yeah, so I did a great job painting the doors, and then he cut off all the edges. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to paint them again. So now I have to paint the edges again. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but all the doors look great. It couldn't, you know, the amount of the meticulous detail that he spent mm -hmm. installing everything was well worth an Airb dual compressor. Nice. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so that was kind of funny and. Yeah, he's still a jerk for <laughs> showing off a, my dream truck. One he of my dream totally trucks. did that on purpose. Oh, 100%. So, yeah. <laughs> it didn't have plates on it. Yeah. <laughs> he drove it over like across town without plates. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Good job, Reese. Yeah. Proud of you, man. <laughs> so funny. But yeah, we got to talking and we know a lot of the, you know, the we're in the same community. So we mm -hmm. know a lot of the same people. So it was, it was good to meet him and fun to, fun to chat. And, uh, he has some nice vehicles. Nice. One specifically. Nice. I found somebody that was really, really into FJ62s. Okay. And might have had an April 1988 FJ62 at one oh, point. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that would have been, so, been fun. We'll talk about that on Thursday's episode. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Anyways, so oh, that's a fun story. I'm glad you got to, you said that. Yeah. So good job, Reese. I'm proud of you. I guess let's get into Barrett Lake, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Figure out if I made it into Barrett. Yeah, that's what <laughs> that's the, uh, I saw the Instagram reel. So I <laughs> yeah. know the answer, but that is, if you haven't seen the Instagram reel, that is really the question. Yeah. Does that fat ass fit through the gate? We'll find out. Go ahead, grab a favorite drink. I got a mocha today. So the caffeine's kicking in and we'll be right on back after a couple words uh, from Brian here for underground. Do you want to put a Super Duty axle under a 4Runner or an FJ80 axle under a mini truck? At Four Wheel Underground, we've designed and engineered the fitment, durability, predictability, and drivability for just about any axle you want to put under a Toyota off-road vehicle. Start your adventure with our suspension builder page over at fourwheelunderground.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentle ladies, uh, to today's campfire discussion on this Monday episode of Snail Trail 4x4. Uh, well, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Barrett Lake. I went up to Barrett Lake, my favorite trail in the world right now. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my far, not by far, but it's up there for sure. Went up there, had a great time, went up there for the weekend. And But before we get into the story, yeah, since we just heard from Brian at Four Wheel Underground, I had a fun little discussion with Brian. Oh, okay. Yeah, about the Forerunner suspension. Yeah. So when we underwent this whole project with Brian, he kind of pre-tunes the coilovers, right? Correct. Before sending them out. And that's yeah. that's part of the service that he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's, you know, half of your suspension is geometry. Half of the suspension is having actually properly tuned coils and shocks. <laughs> I don't know if he would agree with that. Uh -huh. I think he might say more is properly tuned really? and shots than so? geometry, but yeah, I, he might have to call in and let us know that, yeah. that what if it's 50, 50 or 60, 40 or 70, yeah. 30 or, or the other way around. Yeah. 
He's uh, getting married right now, so he's oh, not listening. Right. Yeah. yeah, don't he's worry about done. it. <laughs> don't call it dirt now, yeah. Brian. <laughs> Enjoy yourself out there, buddy. No, but turns out, apparently, we misunderstood him on the tuning. Oh. He will literally work with you on making sure your coilovers for your suspension are fully and completely tuned before he you're done talking with him. Okay. So, so like he'll sit on the phone mm-hmm. while you're driving. No, essentially he'll he'll take your feedback of what's going on and what you're feeling with the rig, and then he'll either tell you, okay, let's adjust the preload one inch or two inches or three inches, whatever it is. Okay, let's adjust the jam nuts to move the slider down so that yeah. you're getting more of your primary spring um, connecting in. And we'll okay. try and you'll try stuff and then go back out and use it and then give them your feedback again. Got it. But he does do some preliminary he setup does. because he does valving and mm-hmm. uh, you know, he asks you a bunch of questions in regards to like how much does your vehicle weigh? What kind of off-roading are you doing? All this, yeah. all these has a questionnaire uh, details so that he can valve it yeah. accordingly. Yep. So yeah. I thought the suspension tuning, the coilover tuning that he did that yeah. he offered with his kits was just that the questionnaire. Um, but turns out, um, he will go back and forth with you and get everything dialed in. It oh, may take a little bit fantastic. longer, mm-hmm. but you won't have to pay extra to take your rig to somebody, get it tuned and go through all that. Um, he actually sits down with you and does it as part of the suspension. So the wow. after, after sale service continues, continues. Yeah. It's uh, outstanding. Yeah. So, um, I didn't realize that. And so we sat down and talked about it and we have a plan to, uh, uh dial in the rear coilovers. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cause I know you, you futzed with them. I futzed and, with them a little yeah. and <laughs> you didn't like it. <laughs> it's, it fixed the problem I was having, which was that the rear end was sagging. Okay. Um, yeah, the yeah. saggy bottom, but then it made the 350 pound springs fully engaging and compressing before, uh, and fully compressing, uh, before the secondary springs really got activated very much. Uh, yeah. So the rear end is kicking up when I go over stuff fast. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I'm not getting all my articulation I could be getting. Got it. So right. he said, once we get that dialed in, he thinks I should be up because I measured 39 inches mm-hmm. of, uh, space underneath the tires. Right. Um, he said that I should be getting about five to six inches more than that. Awesome. That would be so, <laughs> so cool. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> no way. Get out of here, Brian. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, going through that process with him now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd, that'd be a lot of fun. And yeah. it's just goes to show that, you know, he truly cares about his mm-hmm. product mm-hmm. and he wants the best possible outcome for everybody. Yes. You know, for you, the listener or the, the person that is, has this product to, so that they have an outstanding product and mm-hmm. an outstanding wheeling experience. But then that just goes hand in hand with, you know, supporting the company. Yeah. For sure. Back at it. So yep. yeah, it's, it's awesome. I'm excited to come close to being done with a house <laughs> and <laughs> s- sort of starting to focus on possibly installing my kits. Yeah. On yeah. Samantha. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, uh, cool stuff. Wanted to get that story out there and let everybody know yeah. that that's something that I didn't plan on. And it's really kind of cool that he's doing that. So I do know that, yeah. uh, uh, continuing on with this story mm-hmm. that I know that him and our fir- uh, first gen Dave, first mm-hmm. gen forerunner Dave mm-hmm. have gone on the, gone back and forth once in a while on the phone to figure out what was kind of happening on his front end because it was sort of felt like it was driving on sort of an edge, Okay, you know, and they were talking about how things needed to be properly aligned or rotated the axle a little bit more than what yeah. it was or something. I don't even know the whole story, but I do know that Dave called Brian and Brian was there talking through the process with him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, super cool stuff that Brian does that he's doing over there with four wheel underground. So yeah. And congratulations on your nuptials coming up here. Actually they happened two days ago <laughs> from oh, when yeah. this airs. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Barrett Lake, I got invited to go to Barrett Lake with the Hannah's. I know Yeah, that's really nice of them. That was a lot of fun. I um, can't believe it, but it was, yeah, <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah. The Hannah's and the whole samurai crew, uh, oh, so yeah. yeah, Amber's samurai following, uh, came out too for that trip. Oh, so fun. yeah, it was Eric, Dolly, Amber, Justin, Casey. Oh shit. There was a couple more, a couple others in there. And then Randy Slauson showed up <laughs> too oh, wow. for the whole weekend. Okay, cool. 
So it was a really you fun. You should have sat him down for a podcast for the I better sh- podcast. Know, right? Yeah. The better podcast. So anyways, Hussman came along with me. Yeah. Hussman was in your wrong seat. He was in my yep. wrong seat, which was awesome. It was like having a personal photographer there and somebody to poke fun at me the whole time. So good. Yep. laugh at me for my line choices. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really fun weekend. I haven't been on Barrett Lake yet this year. I haven't been in a year plus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think last time you went was during the fire, right? Yeah. When Caldor was just springing up over there. Right. Yeah. yeah. We we made it to the buggy line and mm-hmm. turned around. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I went up there and I was a little worried because uh, Jason Green from Wheeling Wine and Whiskey yeah. went out with uh, some people there, uh, Tack One Fab, Carlos, and a, a couple other people. Tom Rozo was out there. Yep. So, and they went out and did Barrett Lake the weekend before. Correct. Yeah. So I got a report from Jason saying that the trail was tore up. Oh, <laughs> like it fun. was, he said it was the worst he's ever seen it. Okay. Yeah. They said it was pretty bad and they, they alluded to the snowpack and how the water runoff mm-hmm. dug some, so dug some gouges or lines in the, between the rocks that are now deeper than they were before. There's definitely still water on the trail, which yeah. is interesting uh, because when well, it has Lake, been raining though, too, it has been raining. We've been getting a lot of high Sierra showers yeah. for, during the summertime here. But the what's interesting is that this year was the first year since Barrett Lake opened back up from the 42 trails closure mm-hmm. that uh, they didn't have the stipulation on it that it had to be they had to they wait to open it up until 30 days after they measured no, no more. more moisture at some of the meadows up above the lake right. and the, the measuring areas. And that moisture is rainfall, right? That's uh, it's supposed or, to be the, from the snowpack. Okay. Yeah. So water standing. Water standing, yeah, from the snowpack uh, from the winter. So we had a really long winter this year, big snowpack that yes. took a while to get off. So the trail didn't open for a while, uh, mainly because of that snowpack. Um, but the El Dorado National Forest decided to open it up earlier than 30 days after no more moisture. Okay. Yeah. So I was really concerned hearing the reports from Jason that their trail was tore up due to water runoff and how that's going to impact El Dorado National Forest's choosing to open up the trail next year. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Right? I thought you bird walk. Mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say this year it's on record that this was the coolest summer we've had <laughs> in over ten years. No. I mean it might be up. It it is. I saw okay. that too. <laughs> okay. Which is pretty phenomenal. We haven't really had a, any like heat streaks. No. So yeah. but that's I thought you were gonna say that. But yeah, so this year it is the first year that that the trail has been open without this stipulation. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So there's still water on the trail. We have been having mountain showers. Yep. Some of it could still be left from snowpack. Mm-hmm. I heard on their podcast that there's still snow visible in some of the mountains up on the sides. Yeah, for sure. So there could be still some water runoff from, mm-hmm. from those. Mm-hmm. So the question really is going to be what's going to happen next year. Yep. If the trail is so torn up yep. and there is still water sitting on it is that going to hinder us next year. Yeah. So that was kind of my concern going into this trip, going through the trail. I didn't think that it was really torn up at all. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, this seems pretty much on par with what it's been every year. You know what? I mean, it might be a little more muddy and wet because there is a couple spots of standing water here with the exception of one spot on the trail, but every, everywhere else on the trail, I was like, it I, actually looks like it's in pretty damn good shape right now. <laughs> I know the answer to this. Okay. So Jason went a week earlier uh-huh. and he said the trail is super torn up. Okay. Right. You went a week after and you've been in, you've been in the last, you went last year, right? I went last year. I went um, halfway in for some trail maintenance as well um, between then. So yeah. Yeah. And you thought it was fairly normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jason went in his CJ5. Oh, uh, <laughs> and he, the only time he wheels the CJ five is Barrett Lake. <laughs> Pretty much that yeah. or maybe the Rubicon. Yeah. And so he's, that he's always in his buggy. <laughs> it's really hard for him because it's, it's not his buggy. <laughs> That's fair. I, I think you're dead on. I think you're right. He's yeah. so used to that buggy life that actually wheeling a CJ five was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's funny. I think that's the answer. I told him it belongs in a museum, not on a trail. It's so. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. That Actually, that makes a lot of sense. So I've been wheeling with Jason multiple times in the CJ five since he's gotten the buggy. Mm -hmm. And every time he goes in the CJ five, he ends up scaring himself because he's like, well, this <laughs> I shouldn't I'm, be going to take the buggy right I'm now. In the buggy. Yeah. And he chooses line. <laughs> he chooses lines that the buggy should do. Yes. And he chooses and he does thinks that that vehicle's as wide as the buggy yeah. and he gets high centered or turtled <laughs> mm -hmm. in the CJ five. So yeah. I think that's really the answer. I I think you're dead on. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. It was hard because he's not, he wasn't in the buggy. He's not used yeah. to that rig anymore. Mm -hmm. It was like a brand new rig again. Yeah. <laughs> on 37 stickies yeah. on 37 stickies. Exactly. So anyways, uh, I thought that was an interesting find and I, yeah, I think you're right about that. So okay. <laughs> there's only one spot really that's getting kind of tore up in the trail. Um, it's this really big mud hole that has a lateral granite ledge coming through it. Mm. And I don't really remember that being there in the, every other time I've ran the trail. Where is it? It's in the second half of the trail, maybe uh, the last third of the trail. Okay. Um, it's kind of in a little woody spot where there's not really any big obstacles around. You just kind of come around a corner and all of a sudden it just drops down into this mud hole. Mm -hmm. And then you have to climb this lateral ledge to get up and out of it. And people, I, I think I know where you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. And people are uh, creating a bypass to go oh, around no. the lateral ledge. If you are going to Barrett Lake, people, please, out of all trails in the world, do not create bypasses at Barrett Lake. Please, 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 <laughs> please don't go out bypasses. of all the trails. Yeah. It's going on a bypass at Barrett Lake is it's such a tight, windy trail. It's a, it's a one lane trail the whole way, right? There's not really a whole lot of places to pass people in the first place. Right. Yeah. And the forest service is uh, very heavily scrutinized on that trail uh, because it does receive a lot of traffic because it's only open a very short amount of time each year. And so it, it's just such a narrow trail that if you start creating bypasses, it's going to start creating a lot of problems. Uh, yeah, I can see it. So uh, I, yeah. I get it, but I hate it. Mm -hmm. The fact that if that people aren't willing to put their tail between their legs and turn around or just winch that just too. winch if, up. Yeah. It. Like, <laughs> well, if you have a winch, but <laughs> get a winch. Yeah. We just had a super winch group by you missed out people. You did, but don't create new bypasses. Yeah. So I, somebody was talking, um, we were talking on the, the last podcast with Nick and Lee and they were saying how, you know, there was something that was alluded to the fact that, well, I think they went around the bypass on little sluice just time and mm -hmm. trying to catch up and do other things. And there, they sort of alluded to whether you like bypasses or not, you yeah. know, we, that's the way we went. Okay. And to some extent, I almost feel, and I, I'm going to get grief probably for saying this. <laughs> I almost feel that every obstacle pretty much now needs a bypass because this mm -hmm. exact reason, mm -hmm. because if there's not one, people will make one. Yeah. Yeah. And people aren't with a vehicle that's not capable enough to do an obstacle, won't turn around or mm -hmm. winch, mm -hmm. won't, you know, I, and for me, it's more so turn around. Like if you come to an obstacle that you can't do, yep. whether it's winching or going up mm -hmm. it or doing that obstacle, you should turn around. You probably shouldn't be on the trail. You probably shouldn't be on the trail. You should not <laughs> yeah. be going out there. Yeah. This is the, right now, this has gotten too difficult for you and you can't go farther. Mm -hmm. Don't find a way go around it to yeah. continue down the trail yep. and drive over vegetation and drive over things that should not be driven on. Yep. Put your damn tail behind <laughs> between your legs and turn around and get your ass out of there. Cause yeah. you shouldn't be there. Yep. I actually had uh, this exact discussion with a natural resource consultant for Eldorado national forest. Yeah. Cause he was like, I don't get it. Cause I, I somebody came up and was like, what do you need to run the Rubicon? And so I was like, well, if you want to run it and get pretty much guarantee you're not going to have any problems, like 35s, locker front and rear, winch, skid plates, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you're so what if someone comes to you and tells you that they want to go run the Rubicon on 31s? I'd be like, don't do it. And he's, he's like, but you're such an advocate of making sure that, you know, trails are for everybody and public land access is a big thing. And I was like, I was like, yeah, but you we need to have responsibility too. Like if that person on 31s goes on the Rubicon, and then can't get through a uh, part, I don't know, fucking uh, Walker Hill and just decides to go around everything and go up the vegetation, everything like that's not good. And he goes, yeah, but now you're telling people they can't go on certain public lands. Yes. And I was like, 
Yes, because I care about our natural resources. I'm surprised you're not with me on this. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> I think there's an argument there. This discussion is that everybody's allowed to go there. Mm-hmm. Not everybody should yes. go there. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You're if you're on 31s and you know open open mm-hmm. and no protection, mm-hmm. you can go. Yeah. But don't mess it up for everybody else. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Don't do bypasses. Don't break down. Don't drop oil everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you're responsible for your actions. Yes. My opinion is your rig's not ready for that trail. Yeah. And you should build your rig up to be able to do yep. that trail. There's plenty of other trails that'll give you a just fine of yeah. a challenge and are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful up in the Sierras. Yeah. Go to strawberry. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I don't know. I, anyways, tangent there about natural resources and stuff, but yeah. I, yeah, I 100% agree. Right. If you can't do an obstacle, maybe you're not ready to be on that trail, mm-hmm. set up camp, enjoy the weekend there and then head out. Yep. So anyways, so mud you- hole, it's going to need to get filled in. They're going to do a big rock fill or maybe another cement project. The cement project that I helped with a couple of years ago at the tree roots is all like covered with dirt and everything. Now you can't even tell that it's cement there. Oh, interesting. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty cool. They just kind of got swallowed up by the environment. It was kind of neat. Um, but that whole section there looks fantastic. It's in great shape. Now there's no water runoff issues there anymore. And then the rest of the trail was in just fine. It's about the same as I've always seen it. Okay. So Jason's just a pansy. I think he's a pansy and uh, and needs to retire the CJ. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about the trip. Yeah. Did you make it through the gate? Technically, yes. (laughs) Okay. Did you, when you went through, did you move the poles? I did not move the poles. (laughs) Okay. Nope. They didn't Uh, wiggle wider. I don't think so. I didn't measure them before (laughs) and after the front end. So I am 87 and a quarter inches wide in the front from outside tire to outside tire. Okay. And I'm 89 and a quarter in the rear. Okay. So two inches wider in the rear, two inches wider in the rear. Now that's outside tire to outside tire. Mm -hmm. So tires will move and flex and kind of get out of the way. Right. When you try and squeeze through things. Yeah. Bead locks do not. Bead locks do not. No. So really your, your hard track width is outside of your beadlock ring to outside of your beadlock ring or your wheel, whatever your wheel. Yeah. Is. Outside of your wheel to outside yeah. of wheel. Yep. And so I measured that as best I could and came up to 85, 85 and a quarter in the rear. Okay. And I'm pretty sure the gate is like 85 to 85 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I was literally sitting there as we're pulling up. I'm like, I don't know if we're making it in. I really don't like, I didn't think I was going to make it in the gate. And my backup plan was, all right, Hussman and I are just going to go out to the Rubicon, meet the Mad Hatters and have a fun Rubicon trip. We'll just catch up to everybody. So I pulled up front end, went through just fine. Yep. Touched the tires, but it wasn't like squeezing through or anything. Um, And when I went through the when I came through the gate, um, every time I've seen a really wide vehicle go through there, they've always gone through with a angled towards the driver. There's that tree right on the other side of the yeah. gate. Uh-huh. And I've always seen them kind of get through and go up that tree and kind of pivot through the gate. Okay. Um, it's a dead tree and it's, it's like, it, yeah. it's uprooted. It's just sitting there yes. in, behind the gate. So yeah, yeah. it's not like a live tree that people are driving up. Um, so that's what I did coming in. I tried to do that and come in and uh, it didn't quite work. (laughs) Um, I hit my tires, got stopped and I was like, "Hmm, wrong angle. This is not going to work. And as you're looking at the gate posts, they're not perfectly perpendicular. If you draw a line between them to To the the, trail, right to the trail, they're kind of offset a little bit Mm -hmm. and they're offset when you're looking at it, that it makes more sense to go in at a passenger angle to get through. And so that's what I did. I kind of backed up a little bit and turned hard passenger with a Hussman telling me, yelling at me to do it too. Yeah. And then I got and wedged the rear axle into the gate posts. And I was like, Hmm, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not moving anymore. <laughs> so then I popped it into low, low and put on both the lockers, the front and rear locker. And then it pulled through after that. But wow. as I was pulling through the rear driver tire started climbing up the inside of the gate post because of it turning Mm -hmm. and it was kind of like gouging the post a little bit as it was coming up and through. Wow. So I was like, I made it through, 
I don't think that qualifies as fitting through though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I was aired up at that point. So I aired got down it. after the gate post. Did you air up more before you got to the gate? I did not. Okay. I just drove right up and drove right through. Had like 30 pressure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right it was over. about 30. So, uh, did that, got through, uh, while I was doing that and airing down the rest of the group came through. Um, so what was fun was that the samurai crew, did they fit through the gates? They did just fine. Okay. But they came in later. Oh yeah. So my goal was to go in and go to the, the lake mm-hmm. on Friday morning and reserve camp spots for everybody. Okay. And uh, that's what Husman and I were going to do. And turns out MF or Sean like the day before was like, yeah, I'm not coming into work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to Barrett Lake. And I was like, what do you mean you're going to Barrett Lake? Your rig's not done. What do you, what do you mean? You, yeah. And I was like, who are you going with? Cause I'm going to Barrett Lake tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, Oh, I'm going to the gold Hills posse. Oh, I was like, Oh, so I got to go wheeling with the gold Hills posse yeah. and Greg Bakken. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know he wheels. <laughs> he, I didn't either. Yeah. Apparently he sold the LJ. Really? Yep. Sold okay. the LJ and bought a two door JK. Hmm. That's pretty well set up. It's a, uh, it's, it's set up well enough to do Barrett Rubicon as many times as he wants. It would have an interesting time on Ford ice, I think, sure. but it's, it's a really well set up rig. 37s or 40s. I think he's on 37s. Yeah. You know, that's or 38s. I think 38s, but, but yeah, that's good for him because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he's not really the type of guy that will work and build his rig. Yeah. He's more of a bot, not built 100% type of person. Yeah. So he had that LJ. It was moderately built some moderately, um, mainly stock Yeah. and bigger tires. And he had a lot of talk about what he wanted to do. And we were talking with him after we, uh, he was on the podcast and we're like, yeah, you got a lot of stuff to do, man. Yeah. Uh (laughs) And it's good to hear that he solved that problem. Yes. So we were talking about going to Barrett Lake for his birthday this year. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't sure he had another commitment now going on that weekend, his okay. birthday weekend. So he was like, let's do Barrett Lake now. And so it was fun running, yeah. get, just showing up to hang out with the Gold Hills posse. And then Greg was there and I was like, yeah, oh. that's awesome. So I got to go wheeling with Greg finally. Wow. Yep. Was that the first time? I went wheeling with him before. You broke on Barrett. Like, and then <laughs> Jeff broke everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we never made it into the lake, but, um, yeah, so it was fun hanging out with Greg and then, uh, Jeff root, Brian, there was Kevin or Jamie. There was a few, quite a few people there from was, the posse. Was Olaf there? Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. I heard that he was supposed to be there, but he never came. Okay. So fun trip in, uh, had a good time with everybody. So did Sean drive his rig? Nope. He oh. rode with Brian, okay. the first gen forerunner. Got it. Yeah. Let's see. So we made it through the gate. Everybody went through gatekeeper and didn't really have any issues. And, uh, Greg, when he went through gatekeeper, he took a line that I haven't really seen very many people take. I think you might've taken it once. High driver, high passenger. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that big rock right before the tree, Mm -hmm. he just went right over it with his passenger side. Okay. And then that lines you up perfectly for the next rocks yeah. to kind yeah, of yeah. go straight at a diagonal that, through the that obstacle. That one works well. You just got to be careful of coming down off that rock and mm-hmm. leaning into the post. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what he took. And I was like, I like that. I like that line. Cause I've always gone around the rock. Yeah. And, and I was like, let's try that. I have big axles. Now I can bind up my drivetrain and be okay. I think. Okay. And so I went up and over and the rig got really off camber coming down when the rear passenger went up on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> and then immediately as the rear passenger starts coming down the front driver caddy corner that wants to start climbing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. what I was worried about being the just the right wheelbase to jam and wedge the rig in between these two rocks. And the axles handled it just fine. Just popped me right up and over and the whole rig flexed out and it was... Everybody got chubs. Everybody got chubs. Yep. I got a big chub. But yeah, it didn't... It never felt tipsy though. Oh, Which was really cool. Nice. Yeah. I could tell that I was at a pretty extreme angle in the cab, but it never felt like the cab was going to go anywhere. Mm. Uh, That was really nice. Made it through Gatekeeper just fine. Went on down the trail. Um, didn't really have any other issues, hangups anywhere else along the trail. Everybody did great. We made it into the lake in four hours. Hey, that's not bad with a group. Not bad for... We had 
six rigs, seven rigs total. That's pretty good. So not bad at all. Good pace. What did we do? We've done it in like two and a half to three before. I've done two and 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah coming out before two hours and 15. I think going in two and a half, three is yeah. typical for us. Yeah. Yeah. So four hours with a, with a group is, mm-hmm. yeah, that's not bad at all. Yep. What was fun was with Hussman. I was like, I really have to learn how to drive a wider axled vehicle. <laughs> sure. And he goes, yes. he goes, I mean, not, it's very simple. I was like, oh, well, how do you do it in the buggy? Cause his buggy is an inch and a half, two inches narrower than mine is now. It's about the size of your front axle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's about <laughs> okay. the size of the front axle. Um, and he goes, well, you've got big axles now and you're super wide and your center of gravity is lower and, uh, your unsprung weight is doubled. <laughs> yeah. He said, you go over whatever you want to go over on one side of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly I was it. Like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And then you clear everything on the underside. Yep. Yeah. And, and so he goes, you just commit. He goes, he goes, I'm going to start pointing out rocks to you and you're going to go over them. And so he pointed, <laughs> he started pointing out rocks. I was like, I don't need to go over that one though. He goes, I don't care. You're going to get yeah, used yeah. to it. So you know what it feels like when you do have to go through it. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So he started pointing out rocks. He goes, go over that one on that, on the driver's side, go to this one on the passenger side and learn your tires too. Yep. Yep. Learn where the, learn where the tires are, learn kind of how far I can tip the rig and what it feels like being in the rig until it gets to a tipping point. Right. Or you flop or you flop one of the, (laughs) (laughs) and, uh, what was really cool about it was we got in some pretty extreme off camber positions doing that. And the rig never came close to tipping or felt like it was going to tip or anything. Cool. So super, super cool. I'm really happy with the width of the rig and the axles, how the axles turned out, how the suspension is turning out. Everything is doing awesome. Nice. The more I drive it, the more I'm like, this is, this is pretty freaking cool. Sweet. You know, the, at the S turn. Yep. There's the S turn. Then there's the buggy line on the right. Yeah. I went up the buggy line and made it. Cool. I've never made that before. Oh, really? <laughs> I've tried it a couple times and then there's, it's a super dug out on the backside of it. Oh yeah. And so I've never been able to get my front end tires down enough to get traction and get up and over. Yeah. I made it like 10 years ago and then I don't think I've made it since Yeah, just because it, it is super dug out. It's super dug out. It's easy to get up and over the top of mm-hmm. the rock, but then everybody's tires dig out that other side, Yep, like you're saying. So if you don't have a long wheelbase or big tires, you're not getting grip. Yeah. So what I did to get grip, there's, um, there's a monster rock on the right. There's a monster rock on the right, but there's two baby monster rocks on the left. Okay. And so if you climb up and put your uh, driver's side up on those rocks, sure, it tips you over into the monster rock. Correct. Yeah. What's really cool is that my axles are so wide and my body's so narrow that I was able to go up and over those two little baby monster rocks and without tipping my body over into the monster rock on the passenger side. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I ended up making it over. And I've thought for sure I was going to tip over yeah, into yeah. that. Cause it's just, you're going, you're down in the hole mm-hmm. and up on these other rocks. And I was like, dude, this yeah. is, this is not going to work. Right. And the rig worked and got through just fine. <laughs> Dang. That's awesome. <laughs> I've tried to do that. And I'm like, this is too off camber. Yeah. Yeah. With my tiny axles. Your tiny little twin <laughs> axles. Yeah. So anyways, that was a lot of fun putting the rig into that position and watching it or feeling it and driving it and doing what it did. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Letting it do what it does. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, learning the new limits of the rig and that the rig is way, way more capable than I am now. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And you got, there's a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. you got to start learning. It's a new vehicle in Mm -hmm. all honesty. I mean, it's the same Mm -hmm. cab, but it's all new suspension and axles and everything. Yeah. And wheels even, but Mm -hmm. not tires. Right. So it's, it's a new vehicle and you just have to learn it. Mm-hmm. You have to understand it. That's to, I was talking to Reese because mm-hmm. we went over and looked at Bobcat and stuff. And I, you know, and I was telling him, I was like, I just know Bobcat. Like yeah. I have 20 years of seat time in that rig. Yeah. Like I understand its moves. I understand its feel. I understand when it's bound up or not, or I can give it more throttle or if I'm on a weird angle or how things, you know, if I hit a diff or, you know, everything mm-hmm. like I, I'm very in touch with that vehicle. Cause yeah. I understand it. I've been yeah. in it for so long. You're it's a brand new vehicle to you. Yes. Like you have to, <laughs> you have seat time now to start mm-hmm. learning that vehicle. again. Mm-hmm. What I've learned from the trip this weekend was that I can go really far off camber 
which is really freaking cool. And I can bind up the axles and drivetrain because the rig is so light compared to the strength of the axles. And it just, as long as I have everything locked up, it'll just creep and crawl through and work its way through stuff. Cool. So a lot yeah. of fun on um, going into the lake. Uh, we got in and there was two other groups there. Oh, okay. Um, one of the groups that was there was from the samurai guys, the oh. samurai people. He came in Thursday night, apparently. Oh, wow. Okay. So he had already kind of started reserving some campsites. Yeah. Uh, we went over and got the two right on the water's edge. On the far right? On the far right, yeah. Okay. Of the camp area. Um, so we got those two, uh, set up camp, and then hung out. We got in about 1230, had nice. some lunch, got to say hi to everybody. The people that came in for the day trip from the posse ended up leaving around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Yeah. The rest of the posse uh, camped out, set up camp with us, and then we hung around and Amber showed up, Amber Turner around, what was that? Five, five thirty. Okay. Somewhere around there. Maybe she a little planning later. on coming in that day. Too? She was. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. They were planning on coming in, um, in the afternoon. And so, uh, part of it was, you know, us going in early to reserve campsites. Right. So, uh, she comes in followed by a little red Tacoma on 33s. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first gen Tacoma on 33s. Wow. That's impressive. Mr. Slauson. <laughs> oh, that makes sense right there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, in what he affectionately calls it's basically a luxury pre runner. Uh -huh. So, is it built any? No, not at all. <laughs> IFS 33s. I think it might have a rear locker. Dang. The cab and the the body panels are all beat to hell. Okay. <laughs> so it's a raisined first gen Tacoma, but it, the interior is in good shape. It has air conditioning. It's a manual. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> so here comes Slauson and this little beat up Tacoma. That's funny. <laughs> which was hilarious. So anyways, the Slauson got in there and I've never really gotten to sit down and hang out with Randy before. Yeah, I haven't either. I've seen him on the trail numerous times, mm -hmm. but never had to sit down with him. Yeah. I run into him on the trails quite a bit. You know, he lives up here near all the same trails that we're on all the time, but never gotten to sit down and like drink with him and right. sit around a campfire with him. Yeah. That dude is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> Everybody I've ever talked to is always like, no, he takes a while to warm up yeah. to you. Right. And it didn't seem that way at all. Like, Immediately, he apparently he has a very childish sense of humor, just uh, like me. Okay, and so we immediately just started cracking jokes <laughs> and making sexual innuendo jokes left and right, and started drinking immediately. It was a it was a lot of fun. So, well, good hanging out with him all weekend was a lot of fun getting to know Randy better. Let's see, Friday night nothing really happened. Uh, we just kind of hung out, um, and that was pretty much it. Saturday, uh, Eric and Dolly were supposed to be coming in. Yeah. And, uh, and other, other, there was supposed to be three other samurais coming samurais. in with them okay. and the other samurais ended up backing out of the trip. Oh, got it. Okay. So Eric and Dolly were coming in on their own in, by themselves in their Jeep in the JK, yep. Yep, the four door. And, uh, they made it to about a mile from camp and then had no more, no more, no more go pals in the Jeep. <laughs> Well, that's normal. <laughs> I mean, it is normal. <laughs> it turns out they uh, had a no start issue. Oh, so it know. started misfiring, lost a cylinder in the Jeep, and then it wouldn't crank over anymore. The computer was like, something's wrong. We're yep. not doing anything. Yep, exactly. So uh, Dolly ended up getting on the radio and I heard her. I was like, Dolly, what are you doing? She goes, we need help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Hussman and I jumped in the forerunner while I was making uh, taquitos oh. for lunch. So we took a bunch of cooked taquitos down to Eric and Dolly and started diagnosing their electrical system to figure out what was going on. Yeah. And we found a circuit called, uh, the, the ASD number one and number two circuit had a blown fuse. Mm. Interesting. So we replaced the fuse and it started up. Okay. And then died within and, like three seconds. And then was the fuse blown again? It was. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a short somewhere. Short somewhere. And we're like, we don't know what that fuse is. Yeah. The ASD. What is that? And I offered to bring the Starlink with me for yeah. the trip. 
And Amber said, don't bring the Starlink. Yeah. We are in nature. We do not need to contact anybody. We do not need our cell phones. Blah, blah. We do not need internet to figure out what a problem is. Yes. We do not need to figure out what problems are. (laughs) And so the whole weekend, I kept cracking jokes about, man, if we had the Starlink right now, then we could figure this out. Hey, we could figure this out. (laughs) Speaking of Starlinks. Uh, uh Uh-huh. They're nice. Are they? Oh, you got, got one? Got one. Mm-hmm. Got one for the house mm-hmm. out in the boonies. Yeah. Because literally the fastest internet you could get where I live is AT&T and it's 16 down and one up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Installed the Starlink and it was like 65 down and six up or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You've quadrupled your five times your speed. Five times the speed and had half the pr- or double the price. Yeah. But. Still, it's, that's uh, going to be awesome for uploading podcasts. Mm-hmm. It's going to be much nicer yeah. on six up instead of one up. Yeah. And even the assistance house, I ran a speed taste at the assistance house and I think they're four up there. Really? So it's faster uploading than it is in Roseville. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Starlink. I'm a big fan. Uh, I keep using it everywhere yeah. and finding uses for it. So cool stuff. Um, I'm not allowed to steal mine though. Cause oh, you can't take it with you. No. Cause it's, <laughs> then I don't, I leave the house with no internet. Yeah. We can put a repeater over from your parents' house. That would be, Just, that way you could take the Starlink. That'd be funny. <laughs> well, I'm actually trying to figure out a way. I'm talking to some of my geeky friends to send a direct line of communication mm-hmm. to the shop. Oh, uh, okay. So that I can set, so that the internet can be like just beamed right from point A to point B and then get internet at the shop, better yeah. internet than there's there yeah. now. Yeah. You could, we can do that. Yeah. You can set it up. I know. That'd so be awesome. Yeah. We'll work on that. I have some ideas <laughs> already, but anyway, so, uh, kept giving Amber shit. Good. About, she deserves it. She does 100% yeah. mm-hmm. because we didn't have the Starlink. We couldn't look up what ASD was <laughs> the ASD circuit. Sure. So therefore you didn't know if you could just hardwire it. If you should hardwire it, if you shouldn't, what you should yeah. do. Yeah. What is you that didn't circuit? want to, if there's an issue, you don't want to blow things further down the line. Yeah. Cause obviously a fuse is blowing for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's a safety mechanism. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hurt something else. Yeah. But if it's pointless, bypass it and hardwire the whole thing. Yeah. So that was kind of like what we were thinking. Um, the code that was getting thrown on the engine was coil pack secondary. Okay. And we're so like, did you look that up? Uh, no, we couldn't. Oh, uh, why if not? If we had a Starlink, we could have looked that up too. Yeah, yeah. that would have been nice. <laughs> Why didn't you bring the Starlink? <laughs> Somebody told me not to. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, Got some, I don't know, some frizzy haired blonde girl that drives some Frankenstein of a samurai. Yeah. What have you learned about listening to ladies? Uh, <laughs> apparently nothing yet. So no, uh, it was funny. Good uh, thing but, the assistant doesn't listen to yeah. the podcast. I'd get in trouble for that uh, one. Yeah, I'd get in trouble too. Yeah. So we're like, what the hell is a secondary coil? It's not a primary. It's not a primary coil, but like yeah, it's a secondary. I've never heard of a vehicle having primary and secondary coil circuits. Jeeps have them. Apparently they do. Because their <laughs> first coil goes out so often. It's just so they need their secondary. Yeah. So they need a secondary. <laughs> yes. And then in this case, it sounds like the secondary went out too. They need a tri trinary. A tri trinary. Tri- 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 <laughs> a third. <laughs> yeah. A third one. So we transferred all of their stuff over from their Jeep into the forerunner. Okay. And uh, drove them into camp. Got it. So Eric and Hussman ended up walking, hiking. By that time, everybody from camp had hiked down and shown up. So everybody was kind of sitting around watching. So they were after the S turn. They were after the S turn, yeah. But before the slabs, obviously. Yes. Yep. The slabs are pretty close to camp. Yep. Exactly. You start hearing vehicles by the time they get mm-hmm. to the slabs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Dolly rode with me into camp, and everybody else hiked. It was a, a fun trip in. With them, once we got them into camp, there ended up happening to happen to be somebody in camp because it was a busy weekend at Barrett. Uh, there was somebody in camp that was a Jeep mechanic. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> How fortuitous. Yeah. So he ended up uh, taking Eric back down to the Jeep to uh, go through and start taking things apart, diagnosing things. Turns out the coil pack in cylinder six was bad. Okay. So they took one of the coil packs out of the other cylinders, threw it into cylinder six, and then that one got fried. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) So the mechanic, Larry, he was like, I think there's something wrong with your ECU. I think your ECU is sending the wrong voltage signals to the coil pack at cylinder six, and it's frying the cylinder, the coil pack. 
So okay. uh, the Jeep, they got it running on four cylinders, uh, which was pretty funny. It sounded like one of those little Indian putt putt cars. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> not and not smooth <laughs> and not smooth at all. Yeah. yeah. And so they left it there Saturday night. And then the goal was uh, we were just come back on our way out Sunday and uh, grab the Jeep and go out the trail. Sure. So uh, they uh, had it running on four cylinders on their way back into camp. There's a spot, you know, as you're coming around the bathrooms mm-hmm. at the, at the, at the lake there. Yeah. Where there's you have like, to go through the trees. You have to kind of go through the trees. Yeah. And then there's another line that's like right along uh, the granite outcropping, that rock outcropping that comes down. Yeah. And uh, narrow there between the rock outcropping, another rock, and then the trees that you typically go winding through. Yeah. And uh, Larry decided to go through that, that line. And uh, there's a big rock on the left, the driver's side, that you have to go up on top of in order to get through there. He slid off of it onto his axle. And then as he was trying to back up backwards, he wedged himself between that rock and this two and a half foot diameter dead tree. Oh, no. (laughs) And so he had about three inches of movement back and forth. Otherwise, he would that tree like it got lopped off on the top. So it's just this six and a half foot stump. Wow. Wow that was going to break his rear window. Okay. And so earlier in the day, I had cut up a down tree um, with the chainsaw Mm -hmm. because I brought my chainsaw. I love it. And no, apparently nobody else in camp. There was probably 25, 30 rigs at the lake at this time. Nobody else had a chainsaw. Wow. And so this guy comes running into camp as we're sitting around the little propane fire pit. And he comes in and he goes, Hey, Where's that guy? Who's the dude with the chainsaw? Where's the chainsaw guy? Yeah. And I immediately get up. I'm like, did I hear my name? I heard my name being called. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I went and grabbed the chainsaw. We went over there and we started assessing the situation. I'm like, yeah, we just, it's a dead tree. It's a big stump. Like, and we just take it out anyways. Okay. So we took down a hazard stump and uh, he was able to then back out <laughs> of his little wedged in area spot. So that Did was you just fun. like cut it off and then he reversed and pushed the stump off. No, uh, uh, Black Eddie was there. Oh, yeah. Which was hilarious because we were literally sitting around at lunchtime on Friday. Yeah. Talking about Black Eddie. Oh, and then all of a sudden he showed up like 15 minutes later. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we're like, Is he the one that lives in the Bay Area? I don't know where he lives. Okay. He just, he has like one of the first trail bombers ever made. Got it. And he's, he's you literally out wheeling every single weekend right. somewhere in the Sierras. So okay. you run into him everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just funny. We were talking about him and then he showed up randomly. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, Black Eddie um, got himself positioned with a winch up on the top end of the tree as I cut the felling cuts, the wedge cut and the felling cut and then the back cut. So as we got to within one to two inches of being done with the back cut. We had him start backing up as I finished the back cut to lop it off Okay, to make sure it didn't go. Cause the weight wanted it to go into the scrambler right into the Jeep um, rather than away from it. So I uh, got that all done. I ended up cutting it a little high for the felling cut and everything. So after that, I had to go straight through it okay. on the bottom to get it low enough so I can clear the axle. Got it. But that was fun. So we got to play with my chainsaw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Save the day. Oh, save Good. the day. Get my hero complex in. Yeah. Good congratulations there. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. That was Saturday night. And then let's see. Sunday morning came around and oh, Eric forgot to pack a tent for him and Dolly. What? <laughs> Has that ever happened before? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. But uh, how about to you? No. I forgot to pack a sleeping bag. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I forgot to pack a sleeping bag for the the wife. That's why I just leave my tent tent attached to my truck. Uh, Yeah. Right. (laughs) I I usually don't forget it that way. Yeah. It's like, oh, I forgot my truck. Therefore, I forgot my tent. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Hussman, being the Boy Scout that he is, he brought a hammock with him and his little one person tent. And then I had my gazelle. Okay. Last time I was out uh, uh, wheeling with Eric and Dolly, uh, yeah, Marley they, Crawler Roundup. Um, yeah, at MCR, they wanted to test out the gazelle. Mm-hmm. They wanted to see, if, first of all, they wanted to see if it fit in their Jeep. Yes. And then they walked inside and checked it out and yep. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they got to use they, the gazelle this they time. They slept in a gazelle. Yep. You slept in the one person tent and uh-huh. he slept in the hammock. Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So we all kind of moved down, um, which was fun. And so they got to play with the gazelle and Dolly was like, all right, I'm getting a gazelle. 
Yeah. I was like, all right, thanks, Gazelle. I'll be waiting for my commission check, mm -hmm. my next one to come in here. Yep, yep. <laughs> so they got to use the Gazelle. We all traded tents, had a big swappy swap on tents. And um, I'm surprised <clears> you and Hussman didn't sleep in the one person tent. It's It would have been tight. I know. The, yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So he would have wanted to sleep with me in the one person tent. Probably. Oh, we found a Jimmy Lake. What? We found Jimmy Lake. There's a lake named Jimmy. No, we named it Jimmy Lake. Is it small? It's a very small lake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it Speaking was of that, <laughs> I listened to part two of the Rubicon edition on Total Off Road podcast. Okay. Yeah. And he calls you out for calling him small. Apparently he's <laughs> he's shorter than you, but he's almost six foot. No, he's he, not. He said he was, he's five eleven. No, he's not. He is not 5'11". He said he was just Derek. standing next to like Clint, who's super tall. That was me and Chris. Chris yeah, Paul. Okay, Chris Paul. Yeah, yeah, who's super tall. Yeah, Chris Paul is, I think he's a little taller than me, 6'5", and I'm 6'4". Yeah. And then it was Derek. Right. <laughs> Derek, you're not 5'11". <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did crack a joke. I was like, man... I don't know who's taller, you, Jimmy, or Kevin Jones. <laughs> we yeah. need to get you all together and do it back to back to back. Yeah, that's what he was. Uh, he called us out. He said, I have some beef to talk. And he's like, well, maybe it's not beef, but I, I just want to clarify something. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, Derek, that's Because I was literally, I was just parking the car to like get, go to the shop. And he starts talking about, <laughs> I need to talk to you guys about snail trail. For my own. I was like, wait, <laughs> hold on. What, what's going on? <laughs> uh, and Derek. he called you out for that. But yeah. That's fine. We will settle it in January. How's that, Derek? Uh, maybe we'll settle it uh, second weekend of October. We'll see. Oh? Yeah. Oh? Uh, maybe. Barrett Lake? Maybe. Mm. All right. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so you guys didn't do the hike? We did the hike. Well, we did a hike. Okay. Everybody else that was around Saturday morning uh, went to the train, the train crash, the train plane <laughs> crash, the, the train plash, yeah. the plane crash. Um, and Hussman and I went shooting. Oh, cool. So we went up and found a, a little spot that was very secluded and it was a safe spot to go shooting at. And so while we were on that hike, that's when we found this little lake and we decided to call it Jimmy Lake. I'm glad it's at least a lake and not a pond. Well, the second one we found was a pond and we called that one cold Jimmy Lake because <laughs> it was smaller. <laughs> now we need to go on Onyx and figure out what the names of those lakes actually are. That's a good question. I think one of them is like Lost Lake 2 or, yeah, or yeah. Lake number two. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I labeled them in my Onyx as Jimmy Lake and Little Jimmy Lake or was it Cold Jimmy Lake? Cold Jimmy Lake. <laughs> we yeah. we all freeze over in the winter. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so Hussman and I went shooting. That was a lot of fun. I got to play around with his uh, 357. Oh, okay. Um, which is such a smooth shooting pistol. Oh, cool. Um, it's just so heavy, right? The It's a revolver. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It shot super clean. Um, and then we played around with my nine mil for a little bit. And then we decided to go hiking and exploring from there and take a weird way back to camp. And so I don't know, we were out for three hours, three hey. and a half hiking around. Okay. So that was a lot of fun hanging out with Hussman, uh, on the hike and go hiking with him. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done that before. No, I don't. I'm sure Hussman and I have, but I can't <laughs> recall a time that we went hiking together. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we did that Saturday morning while everybody else was doing the plane crash hike. Okay. Then we went and rescued Eric and Dolly, brought them back. I got to play hero again with the chainsaw this time, Saturday evening. And then Sunday, we all just kind of packed up and left. And since we weren't sure how long it was going to take Eric and Dolly to get off the trail and get a tow truck or figure out anything like that, we left fairly early, earlier than we were planning. Sure. And so Dolly rode with me the entire way out and oh. Hussman rode with Eric Okay. the entire way out. So, um, they had some fun conversations. Dolly and I had some fun conversations and, uh, I kept uh, trying to scare Dolly. Oh, she doesn't like being off camber. Sure. And that's how I have to go through a trail now is pretty much off camber whenever there's yeah. two rocks that are close together. So I kept yes. going high on rocks and getting, uh, high on rocks. That's funny. Uh, I had to keep going, uh, you know, up high on one side or the other. And by the end of the trip, she was desensitized. Oh, so I feel like I did my good deed. Yeah, you did your due yeah. diligence there for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now so, she doesn't care about off camber anymore. 
probably not in the forerunner. I think she right. might care if Eric is driving still. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Eric's a wild child when he drives. Yes. He's not too bad. He's not, not too bad. Not too bad. He does he instigate things child. though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. He rode with me down Fordyce. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like a tra- one of the trail leaders and he kept saying, put it in fifth gear and pin it. Let's hear that rev limiter, <laughs> you know, like let's go hit that rock over there. Go in that wall over there, you know, and all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I'm a trail lead. I have to show good example. Like yeah. I can't be doing those things. And that's where he came up with the, the slogan adopt a Jeep. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Cause we were, <laughs> had the Jeeps behind us that we had to, they had to fall. They were very inexperienced wheelers. Mm-hmm. And so I had to choose easy lines because mm-hmm. they were following my lines. So I yeah. adopted a Jeep for that trail. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sounds like something he would do. Yeah. The trip out was fine. Uh, no issues whatsoever. The Jeep made it. The putt putt Jeep Good. made it all the way out just fine. And then Slauson offered to uh, let Eric and Dolly take his Tacoma because it's technically street legal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to their house. Yeah. In the Bay Area. Yeah. And uh, he put their Jeep on his trailer and took it up to Reno. Cause he knows one of the sales managers or something at a Jeep dealer, a, yeah, sure. a Dodge Jeep Chrysler dealer up in Reno. Yeah. So that they could hopefully get a new ECU before trail hero. Oh yeah. yeah which is in two weeks from that. Trip. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then they'll figure out a good time to do a swap of vehicles or mm-hmm. whatever, or maybe drive up there and then, jump in the Jeep and then drive down to trail hero from yeah. there or something. Yeah. yeah makes yeah. sense. Cool. Yeah. So well, that was nice of Slauson. Yeah. Super nice of him. Um, yeah. I don't care what people say about you, Randy. You're a good dude. <laughs> I don't care what those wheelie wine and whiskey yeah. guys say about you. We think you're cool. Yeah. They say one thing on their podcast, but man, when I'm talking in the text message thread about with, about you with them, I don't know if you want to read it. Anyways, you might change your idea of them. <laughs> And then you'd want to join us on our podcast. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, uh, we nerded out over my axles for a while because he was technically the first yep. one that I knew of that ran the 10 and a half inch diffs, right. the Tundra diffs yep. in an Ultra 4 car. So he did that in 2013, 2014. But he was using, what was it, Dodge, three quarter ton Dodge spindles as his outers? Okay. I think that's what it was. And so uh, I was talking with him about the difference between that and the new super duty unit bearings. I was like, why didn't you use the super duty unit bearings? And he goes, because I'm too poor. (laughs) (laughs) That's the thing I love about Slauson and his race program. He does things. He knows how to MacGyver stuff together to make it work. And he makes it work. Correct. So it was cool picking his mind about axles and suspension and everything for the weekend. Um, it was just a lot of fun. So let's see. That was about it. We, uh, once we got back to Slauson's trailer, we hung around for about two hours waiting for him to come out of the trail, um, to make sure that everything gets loaded up fine and they're all good to go. And then Hussman and I headed on down the hill and went home. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a fun time. It was a very fun time coming out of the gate was a lot easier than going in. Cause you had a, you knew the line. Cause I knew the line this time. I didn't wedge myself in by having the wrong line. So I didn't even, I'm pretty sure I touched both sides of the poles with my bead locks, but like I didn't get wedged in or anything. Okay. Just rolled right through. So nice. yeah. So now that I know that I know that I fit through the gate just fine. So what is the pretty much the limit? 85, 85 and a quarter. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> close to that. Yeah. Okay. I need to de take my tires off in order to measure yeah. The beadlock to beadlock surface. Or just, yeah, I guess. I was going to say, just get another set of rims. That'd be easier. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, Barrett Lake was a lot of fun. I absolutely love that trail. Yeah, it's um, a great trail. It rained on us both Friday and Saturday. During the day or just at night? Afternoon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Afternoon showers. Afternoon showers. High Sierra showers. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, when Hussman and I went on our hike... Uh, we went up, you know, the, the hill where the plane crashed, you go up the hill there yeah. out of camp, mm-hmm. halfway up the hill, we found a tie dye sweater that belonged to Amber. I, <laughs> I saw this reel too, or picture or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just sitting there on a rock and we're like, I want to do something with it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to either hide it, put it up, like build it into a scarecrow out here or something. Sure. And we couldn't figure out what we wanted to do. Oh, Okay. When I went on Rubathon, I got this uh, Hawaiian shirt 
that had my forerunner printed into the Hawaiian design, right? Correct. Yeah. From the trail lead. Yep. Yeah. From mm -hmm. Scott Wilson. Does he did that for all of us and our rigs, the trail crew. And so, uh, he ordered one, but he received two of every one. Oh, so I got two nice. of those shirts. Okay. I took one and left it there on the rock and then took Amber's sweater and put it in my backpack. Yeah, okay. Yeah. With the intent of once we got back to camp, I was hoping that she would come back, planning to grab her sweater, realize her sweater's not there, grab my shirt, and then hold my shirt ransom until, sweater. until she gets her sweater back. Sure. And I, I figured she would probably do that. And so I was like, but I have a second shirt. So when she asks for her sweater back and asks me if I want my shirt, I'll pull out the second shirt and be like, I have my shirt. I don't know where your sweater's at. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are you talking about? Yeah. You're crazy. Uh -huh. So that all played out exactly like that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> she went out. Uh, she brought her paddleboard her stand up paddleboard with her. So she went out on the lake. And when she came back in, she came back in through our campsite and uh, she came up and she goes, Hey, where's my sweater? I was like, what do you mean? She goes, where's my sweater? And I was like, uh, what sweater? What are you talking about? And she goes, I went hiking earlier, put my sweater on a rock. And when I came back, your shirt was there. And I was like, what shirt? Yeah. <laughs> she goes, your, your Hawaiian, your forerunner shirt. And I was like, I have my shirt. What are you talking about? She's like, no, I have your shirt. And I was like, no, I have my shirt. And she yeah. goes, no, I have my shirt. It's back at the samurai. And I was like, no, I have my shirt. It's in my <laughs> tent. And she goes, no, you don't. And so finally I was like, yes, I do. I turned around, went and got it. And I came over to her with the shirt, the second one. And she just, the look on her face of <laughs> confusion <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> so finally she went back to the samurai to see if she actually had Still my had shirt. It. Yeah. Had her samurai. <laughs> so while she was going over there, I threw on her sweater really quick, which will look hilarious on me because it's super small. And then I just hear this voice from over at the samurai yell, excuse me. <laughs> and I look over and I had just stepped out from behind the tree that was blocking. I was using to block the view and she saw me wearing her sweater. <laughs> I was like, Oh, you mean this sweater? <laughs> this is my sweater. This is my sweater. If it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that was a lot of fun. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I love little innocent pranks like that. Yeah. That's fun. Always fun. Uh, let's see anything else happened. That was a lot of fun that weekend. A lot of fun conversations. Uh, with everybody getting to meet and learn, uh, you know, I just love figuring out people's personalities. Okay. Like one-on-one -on -one and in small groups, like in big groups, I just sit back and watch people. I don't really interact with people. So this was fun because it was a smaller group. So getting to interact with people and learn about people that was yeah. very enjoyable. Glenn white from Rubicon. Yeah. His son was there. Kyle. Uh, Clint, I believe his name is, could be Kyle. I thought it was Kyle. It's either Kyle or Clint. Okay. <laughs> Glenn's son was there. So uh, we got to meet Glenn's son. I met him in uh, Moab. A black YJ? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the same guy then. Yeah, I met him, uh, a couple other people. Uh, there was a dude there that I met out at Marlin Crawler Roundup that ended up showing up here at Barrett okay. Lake too. Yeah. So talking to him, I was like, hey, how's it going, man? He's like, hey, how are you doing? Um, then I got to show him my rig because okay, I was yeah. asking him a lot of questions about his rig and he was probably like, who is this guy? And I told him I had a forerunner that was being built. And, and, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where like people don't get it until they see it. Yeah. They don't, people don't get that. You're really that much into vehicles yeah. until they see your vehicle. Right. Okay. And so, uh, we noted out over mine for a little bit. And then there was another, there was two or three listeners there from the podcast oh, as yeah. well, which cool. was a lot of fun getting to meet those guys. There was another dude there with a first gen forerunner that had a three, four swap and um, was working on putting some tons under it. That's the next kind of step and linking it. And so I was comparing notes with him and uh, he had a four core radiator. In oh, it. interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so he said that with his four core <laughs> radiator and the stock mechanical fan coming up highway 50, his temperature never went above 200 degrees. Wow. That's great. Yeah. So I took some notes. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to be copying his cooling system, his cooling setup, because I'm still overheating. It was just fine driving the forerunner around with no bumper, no winch on it. Just fine in 95, 98 degree heat. So I had, that means I had an airflow. I had plenty of airflow. Everything right. was working right. Right. Yep. As soon as I put the bumper on, it started overheating, driving around bumper or winch both. Okay. But then I took the winch out for the trip. 
and I'm still overheating going up the grades. Mm, interesting. So as long as I turn the air conditioning off and turn the heat on full blast and have the windows rolled down, it does just fine. It stays at running temperature, right? 195 to 200 degrees. Okay. But as soon as I turn on the air conditioning, it shoots up to like 235 degrees going up grades. Dang. So I need more airflow. Yes. And Sounds more like cooling. It. And I had never heard of a four core radiator before. Yeah, I haven't either. I always just assumed yeah. that they stopped at three cores, but right? I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, more cores for, never mind. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to put a four core radiator in the forerunner and go back to the stock mechanical fan Yeah, and see if that does anything. You have the room for it too. I do. Cause my engine is pushed down and backwards. Yes. So there's a lot of space there between the front of the engine and the radiator. My only concern is that the stock fan is not going to be close enough to the radiator to really pull air through the radiator. Sure. So we'll see. We'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, I think that's about, all that I did. I was really excited with how the forerunner behaved. I'm loving driving it more and more and wheeling it more and more. Um, I was driving it around 80, 82 miles an hour today, this morning cool. <laughs> on, the, on the freeway. And man, it just drives straight. Nice. It's so, yeah. it's so great. The steering is nice and tight. Everything drives really straight. Um, you got to drive it. I did last yeah, week. Felt great. My Ackerman angle is a little off. So, okay. Well, I, I set up the caster to be a very positive caster, right? Yes. Um, so I'm at about eight degrees caster or something like that. Oh, wow. Okay. So that means as I'm driving straight, it'll stay straight. It'll stay tracking yes. straight um, with the bigger tires and everything. But that also means that it, as it starts turning, it all of a sudden gets to a point where it turns a lot all at once. Yeah. It almost feels like the toe is off, but it's not. I'm at a one sixteenth in tow. Okay. And it's my Ackerman angle that's causing that. And the, and the Ackerman angle is off because I was such a high positive caster. Um, and I did that because I wanted to drive straight. So I just have to keep in mind that when I go to make turns or if I'm going back and forth, weaving in the uh, lanes or going to pass somebody that it turns a little bit, a little bit, then goes really quickly with the turn afterwards. So as long as I remember that, it's all good. And I absolutely love driving it on the street. I love driving it on the trail. Um, I just need to get the cooling figured out and the stereo figured out. And then I'm all good to go. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, Reese suggested is now that you have your rig done, you know, and we've talked about it so much, especially lately since mm -hmm. it's done and you can, you know, you I get to play with it now it. and figure yeah. it out. Yeah. He said, uh, we should do another meetup, schedule another meetup for people and see if we can, uh, so people can come and check things out. We do need to do another meetup. I don't think we've done. No, we did a big, the beat up at a uh, high water brewing. Yes. I would say, I think that was the last big one, but before that it was before COVID just, yeah, yeah. It was December. No. Yeah. Well, it was December of 19. Was it December 19? Something. I don't like know. That. Yeah. So we've only really yeah. done like two big meetups. Yeah. Um, so we definitely need to do another one. Yeah. We'll figure um, it out. We're, yeah. we're both pretty busy right now with life. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Tyler's got a few travel plans coming up and you know, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be just be busy with life in general and moving and everything. So, uh, but I think it'd be, I think it's about time we should have another one. And I, I think that's a good suggestion. And yep. I think, uh, we'll figure out a date and time and place and location and all of the above and let everybody know. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, let's see anything else for this episode before we close it on out. Nope. I think we're good. Sweet. If you guys have any feedback, any things you want to say, uh, you can give us a call 916-345-4744. Uh, you can also shoot us an email at Tyler or Jimmy at snailtrailforksor.com. There's the Instagrams. Uh, there's uh, some pretty, oh, my stories are going to be gone by this time. Yeah. I say there's some pretty comical stories from <laughs> my adventure your, over your the past week trip. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, you can uh, check out uh, some of the posts, uh, videos of the, the forerunner working out at Barrett Lake. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to post some of the pictures too of the lake itself. There was some amazing early morning pictures where the lake is just glass cool, and it's reflecting the mountains behind it. So cool. That's called the Alpine glow. Is that the Alpine yeah, glow? Alpine glow. Nice. So I got some Alpine glow pictures up there. You can see those over at four by four Toyota Tyler or snail trail forks for on Instagram. Let's see any, any other ways. There's lots of other ways to contact us. You guys know what those are by now. So, uh, Facebook, I rate four by four, all that good stuff. Jimmy jet. Do you have any final words for everybody out there? So hustle nuts was pointing at rocks to tell you to drive over them. 
but yes. denied you from the buggy line. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> it's because I don't have a rear bumper right now. Oh. So coming through there, if I smashed up the the rear quarters or the rear tailgate or anything, we can't get into our camping gear then. <laughs> It. it would have been bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but he let you smash your tail light. Yeah. I mean, I kind of did that myself, okay. but Got it. yeah, <laughs> that was on the way out. So you already <laughs> yes. need yeah, we to use the camping gear. We already used the camping gear. All need. right. Uh, Dolly and Eric didn't need it anymore. I should say. And with that, my friends keep crawling. I got one for you. I'm ready. Are you sure? Mm, no. This one's pretty good. Okay. All right. What do ticks and the Eiffel Tower have in common? Tits and the Eiffel Tower. No, ticks. T- oh, oh. Ticks. ticks. Like the bug, the insect. Like the bug. Yeah. Gotcha. Not like the bird. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do bug ticks have in common with the Eiffel Tower? Correct. Yeah. I have no idea. They're both parasites. Oh, okay. (laughs)